Welcome to Silesian Snippets, stories from Mornese and beyond, where the fifth of every month, we'll learn more about St. Mary Mozzarello and our Silesian charism as we prepare for our 150th anniversary. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope you enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to our monthly meeting of Salesian Snippets. My name is Sister Monica Wheeler. I am one of your hosts for Salesian Snippets, and we're very excited today to be joined by Pam Meyer, who is a Salesian cooperator. As you know, we have been joining you the fifth of every month for the 2021-2022 year in order to bring you a little taste of Salesian spirituality from Mornese, where our first sisters live, to how it affects our lives today. We choose the fifth of the month because our very first sisters in Mornese professed August 5th, 1872. So that's right, 150 years is coming up before we know it. And we're very excited to live this year with a lot of joy. And that's why we're joining you every month on the 5th. So we hope that you enjoy learning a little bit more about our early sisters and how their life is um, still applicable. The way they live, the charism is still applicable, applicable to us today in our Salesian family. We thank you again so much for joining us. And before we um, get any further, we want to begin as we do all things Salesian family, begin all things with prayer. So we invite you to pray with us. The prayer to our Heavenly Father, entrusting ourselves to his divine providence through the intercession of St. Mary Mazzarello. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, source of all that is good, you give us in St. Maria Dominica Mazzarello a shining example of Christian and religious life. Through her deep humility and ardent charity, grant that we, in simplicity of spirit, may bear daily witness to your fatherly love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mary, hope of Christians, pray for us. St. Mary Mazzarello, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you again for joining us. As you know, in our Salesian Snippets show, we begin every one of our shows right after prayer with a trivia question that goes along with our theme for the month. So our theme for this month is work, Salesian work. And we're going to be looking at that through the lens of St. John Bosco and St. Mary Mazzarello. So our trivia question for you to think about is... Mary Mazzarello learned this new skill in order to teach the girls of Mornese. This one might be familiar to many of you. So we invite you to put your answer in the comment section of our Facebook so that we can check that out at the end to see how many people know what that skill was that Mary Mazzarello learned in order to teach the girls. So while you're doing that, we're going to get to know Pam just a little bit better. Um, as I said, um, she's a Salesian cooperator. And for those of you who are not familiar with the Salesian cooperators, I'm going to do my best to give them an advertisement, even though I'm not a cooperator. So the cooperators are actually founded by St. John Bosco before the Salesian sisters, actually. And he founded the cooperators because he knew that the work that needed to be done for the salvation of young people could not be done just with the priests. He needed lay collaborators. And so these lay collaborators work hand in hand with the priests, with the sisters, and their mission is the same, is um, bringing the young to Christ and Christ to the young. So I, does that sound right, Pam? It sounds right. In a nutshell. Okay, in a nutshell. Very good. Very good. If you need more information, though, Pam would be happy to help you out with that because we're always looking for new cooperators. So Pam is um, teaching at St. James, one of our Catholic schools here in um, San Antonio. And Pam, one of the ways we get to know our guests every month is we play this little game called From the Mundane to the Mystical. So are you ready to play From the Mundane to the Mystical? I love games. I'm ready. Okay, so this is, we're going to ask you two questions. One's mundane, and the next one's mystical. So your mundane question goes with this time of year, which is everybody, you know, getting sick, whether it's COVID or just a normal 
cold, you know? So do you have any home remedies you like to use when you feel like you're coming down with a cold? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I love to have a hot cup of tea, put a little bit of honey in, and also rest. I love to take naps and just rest my body, get underneath the covers and stay warm. So I think that's the best thing to do. The so tea is trust, the, yes. Trust your inner doctor. Just keep that Absolutely. inner doctor <laughs> Yes. Okay, very good. That is important. Rest is a biggie, right? And so the mystical question is, you know, hopefully we all pray, right, every day. But for each one of us, there may be a particular style or type of prayer or a certain prayer that is particularly helpful or meaningful to us. So I wonder if you would share with us what that prayer might be for you and why you find it meaningful. So I actually have two prayers that, um, you know, that are very important to me. One is the Hail Mary. And I just, whenever I am fearful, um, love to just um, focus on this prayer, concentrate on the words um, that we hear when we pray the Hail Mary. I envision Mary wrapping her arms around me, and it brings me a lot of comfort and peace. Um, and another one is the guardian angel. That's always been a favorite prayer of mine since I was a child. I used to be very fearful of things when I was little, and I would... Um, go to bed at night and be afraid of the dark. And so I would always close my eyes and think of angels all around my bed. And I would say that prayer. And so those two are very special to me. And, um, you know, I was thinking also when I came to St. James, I just have to share this little story. When I came, one of the teachers that took me into the learning center, took me down the hall to show me where my room was going to be. And we were walking and there's several rooms in the building. And as I came down the hall, I could see a painting on the wall. And I looked and it was the, the guardian angel painting. And so I knew that I had come to the right place to teach. And then that that was going to be my room. And so once again, that prayer just, you know, has always just been very special to me and really showed itself when I saw that painting. That's beautiful. And, you know, I think it's a good reminder, you know, when we pray those like rote prayers, like the meaning behind those words is powerful, you know, to really feel the presence of Our Lady when you pray the Hail Mary and the protection of the angels. Like there's a reason why those prayers have, have, been around for so long it's not just words it's really you know teaching us a very important truth so thank you I know I'll be praying those prayers in a different way you know hearing you say that it's really important to really know what you're praying so thank you so much for en engaging in our game you never know what you're going to get there in those questions but our topic today is work and we wanted to invite a Salesian cooperator on because work is so important um, to our life as Salesians, not just those, those, you know, in religious life, but also our lay collaborators. So I wonder if you could share with us a little bit about the work that you do as a cooperator and how you find that you live that in the Salesian charism. So as you mentioned, I'm a teacher at St. James and I, and I teach preschool, pre-K four. And so um, I'm of course with the children all day. And so I really focus on the preventive system with the children, you know, try to keep that in front of me, focusing on the reason, religion and loving kindness. And so, you know, with children, we're always reasoning. We're trying to make them understand things. We want to engage them in conversation and and really listen to what they're trying to say so i think that is really important to focus on the reason and of course religion we do everything for god and so whether we're sitting in circle time and if they they get the right answer i'll i'll tell them gee give yourselves a hug and say gee i'm great god made me special so that's bringing that religion in and then teaching them to be loving and kind to their friends and so I'm lucky because I get to really share that with them every day. And it's also good for me because I hold that to myself and whatever I do, I try to remember to use the pillars. And it's not always easy, it's a challenge, but it's, it's a good goal for myself. So, you know, Don Bosco really used the preventive system in terms of education, but we know like probably people who are watching us and many people in the world aren't necessarily teachers. Do you think that the preventive system is something that anybody can apply in their work and their experiences and what they do in day-to-day -day life? 
Absolutely. No matter where you are, right? We need to be better listeners. We need to, um, you know, encourage people, um, work out problems. And so whatever area of work you're in, you face those things. Even within your own families, you need to reason with everybody, listen to everyone, collaborate. And again, holding God right in the center of your life, you know, is very important. And to do it with the spirit of loving kindness which again is a challenge. And so it's a challenge for all of us. And so it's important to just reflect on those three pillars and, and do your best to apply them no matter what you're doing. Uh, absolutely. And you know, what you were saying about, you know, keeping God in the center, I think too often in our society, we think of like work being here and family being here and God being over here, you know, that's the thing that we do X, Y, Z, but really like that idea of religion, it's not just saying like go to church on Sunday. It's like, no, like, how do you realize that he's there in the midst of everything? Um, I, I know I shared with you earlier, the, reading the quote about, um, you know, for Salesians, holiness is, consists in sanctified work. Because what do we do? We work like anybody, everybody has to work, whether you're a parent or an employee or everybody works. But the key is, can we sanctify it? Can we make it holy? And, you know, we, we've been talking about Don Bosco as the founder of the cooperators and the one who, the originator of the fermented system. But one thing that we find so amazing and just um, beautiful in our history as Daughters of Mary Helpful Christians is that before St. Mary Mazzarello met Don Bosco, she was already living the preventive system. She already had the spirit within her because it's a gift from the Holy Spirit. And, um, you know, when she she was a hard worker growing up, working in the vineyards, working on the farm. And then she got sick and was no longer able to do that work. And that was really a turning point in her life when, when she felt the whole, the blessed mother, like call to her, you know, I entrust them to you. And, but it's interesting because her thoughts immediately went to, how can I do this? How can I use the the strength that I still have to do that. And the way that she came up with was I can learn how to sew and I can teach that to the, to the young girls. But I think it's really key, the part going back to the religion aspect of the preventive system that she told her best friend, we can make, we can teach them to make every stitch an act of love for God. So it wasn't just about teaching a skill. It was teaching them how to sanctify their work, how to work, but work with God always in view. Um, and it's just, I mean, what part of the story resonates with you? I mean, I've, 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 you've probably heard this story a dozen times, but it's, it's just, it, I think it expresses well, like our, the, how work fits into the charism. Well, I think that every stitch is an act of love for God is, is just, um, really important to reflect on those words. And with the children, for me, with teaching, you know, whenever they're doing something, I'll, I, and we'll talk about it, let's do this for God, let's show God, you know, we know how to do the right thing. And so no matter whether they're playing or they're talking with friends, you know, we bring that in, into our discussion. And as little as they are, they know that, they understand that. You know, today we were doing a song and it's, it's this great song, a musical song. And they were walking around the table singing, we follow Jesus. We want to be like him. <laughs> and so everything they do, they're doing it in the spirit for God. And they know that. So that I is, think those are words for them to reflect on. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, again, it, it's so beautiful to see that like in a Catholic school to teach kids how to make that happen. But, you know, everybody has a different experience, right? Different experience in working. And sometimes, I mean, even I, <laughs> as a professed religious, I can sometimes lose track of that, right? So I wonder if you have any sort of invitation for our listeners, like how do, how can we live that sanctification of work, which is so characteristic of Salesians, um, either from the example of Don Bosco or Mother Mazzarello or both, like what would be your invitation? Well, first of all, it's a practice, right? So none of us can say we're going to do it every day and we're not going to, you know, forget what we should do. It's a practice, a practice, practicing using the reasoning with whatever you're doing, practice focusing on, on God, knowing that you are doing everything for God. And that we want to practice being loving and kind. And, and it's just a practice. It's a way of life. And I think when you 
get in situations where you're struggling and things are difficult, if you can center yourself and think of those three pillars, if you can remember everything you do is, is just like St. Mary Mazzarol said, it's um, every stitch is an act for God. If you can think about everything you do is for God, it helps you. It, it helps you focus. You know, and, and like I said, it's not always easy, but it can kind of bring you back. It can center you and help you in whatever you're doing, whatever line of work you're doing. It also helps you in your families. Mm -hmm. And maybe even especially those things you don't like doing, whether it's cleaning don't up don't like to do. or dealing yes. with a coworker. It's like, this one's for you. <laughs> right, exactly. We all struggle with that. That's yeah. we're all human, but yeah. it helps us to focus and, and to look at how we need to fix ourselves. We use the word fix ourselves in our room a lot. You know, what can you do to fix yourself? And so we all have to fix ourselves. So these are good Like Francis de Sales, becoming the best version of ourselves. Right, exactly. And we better put work into that. We better put work into it. And we also better put that into our work because a lot of our lives are taken with work. So the more we sanctify it, the faster we'll be sanctified. <laughs> so um, we thank everyone for joining us to learn a little bit about Salesian work in our spirituality. We, we hope that um, each one of us can, um, you know, make work part of our prayer um, this, this coming month, because it is, it's, it's such a beautiful way of bringing, bringing the reality of God into everything that we do. So if you were listening to this section about Mary Mazzarello, you heard the answer to our trivia question, which was, what skill did Mary Mazzarello learn in order to teach the young girls in Mornese? And the skill was sewing because she wasn't a seamstress just to start with. She worked in the vineyard and on the farm. So that was a skill she learned. Anything for the young people, right? We will learn new skills. We'll do whatever it takes to bring them to God. So thank you so much, Pam, for joining us, um, for your example as a Salesian cooperator and for um, just for the joy that you bring to, to what you do. It's really a pleasure to know you and to have you out there as a representative of the cooperators. And again, anybody who's listening, um, we are always looking for new people to collaborate with us as Salesian cooperators. So oh. Yes. Um, and then just a couple quick advertisements. Remember, we join, we, we join you the fifth of every month. And the next fifth, uh, February 5th, we're gonna Sister Sydney will be your host that month, and she will be joined by Father Joe Kapora, who you might have heard of before. He's a he's an author and a speaker. He was Pope Francis um, named him a missionary of mercy. I believe in the Jubilee Year of Mercy, but he is a past pupil of the Salesians, of the sisters, and has always held the sisters in great esteem. So they will be, um, he will be joining Sister Sydney for the 5th of February. I believe the topic is prayer, but I could be wrong on that one. And then also a reminder that we have our Salesian Family Day, our virtual Salesian Family Day coming up. So please check out our website to see how you can register for that. Pam will also be sharing with us uh, at that virtual Family Day. So we really invite you to join us for that event. We thank you for joining us tonight. And let's go out there and work for the kingdom of God as true Salesians. God bless you and good night. <laughs>